When you think of Optolong filters, I bet your first thought either goes to the L Enhance, L Extreme or L Pro filters. But did you stop to consider the LRGB SHO filters that Optolong do? When you're using a monochrome camera, you need to use filters to help color the light as it comes in. A way I like to think of it is these are tinting the light as it comes in to the mono sensor. In reality, they're actually rejecting other wavelengths of light, but you know, the easy way to think of that is tinting the light as it goes through. And also the SHO filters, the sulfur, hydrogen, alpha, and oxygen filters are narrowband filters, which are used to block out a lot of light pollution and really isolate key details. To that end, First Light Optics have sent me a full complement of Optolong LRGB SHO filters and this filter wheel to test. Now, since I've had these filters, I've done a couple of HA images, I've finished a few LRGB images, and I've made some Hubble Palette SHO images as well. So I feel like I've had a good run of this filter set to pass judgment on it. Let's get going. Generally speaking, they've behaved really well since I've had them. Now, I've got a larger variety of filter here. I think these are 31 or 32 millimeters, but there are different sizes. So no matter what size you actually end up buying, the, they're the same glass, same substrate, same coatings. So this filter will apply. This review will apply. I have a script and everything. Now I'm gonna just start with the immediate elephant in the room, the one that I hate the most, and that is halos. Now with this setup, I was able to mount the camera directly to the filter wheel. So the sensor was basically butted up straight against the filters. Now this apparently helps with controlling halos. And in my time with these, with this 183 camera and the Optolong filters here, I didn't actually notice any haloing at all. They were very well behaved as mentioned. And I've used this filter and camera setup on the Sharpstar 61 EDPH2 as well as my Skywatcher 80ED. So a couple of different telescopes, same kind of result. Now the narrowband filters are generally a bit more tricky to deal with. You usually have to use longer exposure times anyway. However, for the band passes of these Optolong filters, which is seven nanometers for the hydrogen alpha and six and a half nanometers for the oxygen and sulfur bands, this was fine as well. The hydrogen alpha data I saw was crisp, full of contrast, a lot of detail there. Sulfur and oxygen, however, are a little bit harder to gauge because they don't, they're generally weaker signals, so they don't usually show themselves until you've stacked them. Again, though, no real complaints here, just need to lay on more exposure time, kind of is the normal deal, especially with those lower signal filters. Now, the SHO filters blocked out practically all the light pollution. It's kind of their thing, it's what they're really well known for as well. Just be mindful, obviously, if you're shooting right next to a street light or the moon, you're gonna see light pollution and gradients sleeping in. But generally, if you're a bit more sensible about where you point the telescope in regards to artificial lights, they'll work just fine. Now, if you know my reviews, I always like to find that one negative that I bring up. In this case, the Optolong SHO RGB filter set doesn't advertise being par focal with each other. This means that they all the individual filters don't have the same focus point. Some brands do advertise this, and I actually noticed this in practice. I don't think I have any B-roll of it, but when I was shooting my Perseus double cluster, for example, I would change from red to blue, and the focus would be completely out of whack, or luminance to hydrogen alpha, and again, it would be different. Even red to hydrogen alpha was out of focus. So. If you're gonna go out and manually refocus them, which is what I had to do when I was shooting the Tadpole Nebula, you might have caught that vlog, then you would have to go and refocus between each filter. Otherwise, a lot of mono images actually invest in an autofocuser to help overcome this issue. And that's what I eventually got around to doing myself. So if you have an autofocuser, them not being par focal with each other is just a bit of lost time while the autofocus routine works. And if you haven't got the money for an autofocuser or it's you know, somewhere on the shopping list, just be mindful that you're gonna to have to manually uh, focus each filter as it changes. They're not part focal and it will knock your focus out. At the time of this review, the broadband LRGB filters range from 169 pounds for the one and a quarter inch filters up to 239 pounds for the 36 millimeter unmounted filters. So that's the set of four. The narrowband SHO filters start from 359 pounds for the one and a quarter inches and go up to 429 pounds for the 36 millimeter unmounted. Again, the price goes up as you go up in filter sizes. There's no surprises there. 
Now, depending on your own budget, these could be cheap or affordable, these might be extremely overpriced. Generally, I find Optolong are mid to lower range of the price tag, so make of these numbers as you will. And if you want any more information about prices, sizes, transmission charts, anything that I might have missed, more information can be found at the links in the video description down below. So in summary, I don't really often see people shooting with the Optolong SHO LRGB filters, as stated at the beginning, they're more well known for their L Enhanced, L Extreme and L Pros. However, during my time with these mono filters, I found them to be extremely capable. They've sat there in the filter wheel, dutifully did their job, didn't really complain, didn't produce halos, and I've just enjoyed using them. I didn't feel like they had to be better. I didn't feel let down by them. Of course, better quality filters are on the market and will cost more money. But if this is your price point, then the Optolong filters are pretty good I felt. So if you're building a mono rig and you're looking for your first set of filters I think you'd be in good hands with the Optolon filters. Depending on your skies if you're only going to buy one set, if you live in the middle of London or a very light polluted city you probably want to go for the narrowbands first. If you live in the more gentle light pollution or no light pollution you might want to get the LRGB filters first or just get the full set if you've got the money for it. You're a big spender. Thanks very much for watching everybody, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and if you think it could have been better then you know what to do. And if I've missed anything, or you just want more information, drop a comment down below. And if you're thinking about building a mono rig, what kind of equipment are you using? What kind of camera? What kind of telescope? And are these filters going to be a nice set for you? Again, let us know in the comments down below. And with that, it's time to say thanks very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.